So now in this video, we're going to look at uh, basically the capacitor itself as a circuit fragment. Its voltage changes over time based on how much current is either flowing into it while it's charging or out of it while it is discharging. So here is a 1000 microfarad capacitor. It stores a relatively large amount of energy. There are super capacitors. They're in the farad range. So that's 1000 microfarad the same as a millifarad, it takes 1000 millifarad to equal a 1 farad capacitor. So a 1 farad capacitor would store a thousand times the energy of uh, this one. But in any case, this is the electrolytic, it's polarized. One side has to be more positive, one side has to be more negative. This is the more negative side, a shorter lead there, plus we got that dash right there to indicate that, and then the longer lead has to be more positive. Right here I have a 0.47 microfarad capacitor which is the same as 470 nanofarad. Also on the board I have a 4.7 picofarad. So it takes a thousand picofarads to equal one nanofarad and so this has a hundred thousand times as much stored charge per voltage as uh, this one right here. So these have a lot less energy storage than the uh, large one I just showed and so I'm not going to use them for this video but uh, in any case this one this is about half of a microfarad right there so that's about 2,000 times as much energy storage otherwise they're the same except for those two could be charged in either direction or both you could alternate current through them so to begin with to uh, charge the uh, capacitor it's really easy first let's make sure it's discharged and uh, there might be a pop nope there wasn't so I have the power supply set to uh, 10 volts right here and uh, so we'll zoom in a little bit and uh, look at this to uh, charge this it's pretty straightforward you're gonna see some current flow right when I charge it so I'll put the uh, positive side to the positive rail and then the negative side to the negative rail once I get a connection, you saw a brief uh, current change there. So now, we can make sure it's discharged by going negative rail to negative rail. It's better to do this through a resistor. Watch this, you'll see a spark. Once I got a connection, there was a spark. So we can go higher voltage. It'll be more uh, dramatic. And I uh, uh, got positive, positive. There you go. Positive to uh, negative. We even got a spark while it charged, and now let's uh, discharge it. Right there, big spark. So, it will spark. That doesn't really damage anything. Maybe it vaporized a little bit of metal somewhere along the line. But in uh, any case, we could use lower voltages to avoid those sparks. But in uh, any case, let's uh, go to 10 volts. I have it slightly higher because we lose a little bit at the rail. But in any case, I'm going to charge this. And also, we have an LED. So I'm charging it right now. We got the LED there. We will take uh, this resistor, and it should be set about as wide as the capacitor when you also include the LED. So now I'm going to put the negative side of the capacitor to the cathode, the short lead of the LED, long lead of the uh, capacitor. We're going to put to the resistor. Now you see the LED lit up. So that stored charge is now powering the LED. So that's really more of a use for supercapacitors, other than, as you can see here, we slowly faded down the brightness of the LED. If we get it dark enough, you can still see that there is some glow. So it can power things for a while, but it loses its power over time. So that's kind of the uh, energy storage of the capacitor but also it can fill in the gap for brief periods of time of power loss and so if you can think of if we had this powered where the uh, power supply is powering this but we also have the capacitor as a backup brief uh, losses of power the capacitor will power it uh, pretty nicely for brief periods of time so that's basically a smoothing capacitor. So now we have basically set up what you see here. The resistor is to the positive rail 
right there comes to the uh, positive side of the capacitor, negative side of the capacitor is over there. So the way we have this set up, it did not charge instantly, like when you put it right to a rail. And uh, so actually it may took a little longer because we limited current. But in any case, it charged over time. Right now we're actually going to look at that. So I'm going to short circuit the capacitor right now, which is the same as closing a switch right there and so there you go there was a little bit of spark you see that line there that is the voltage dropping to nothing right now and so it's down here because we have the switch so now we're gonna release the switch which is the same as just opening the circuit like that and there you can see a curve so the curve is similar to what uh, you see there and the exact curve depends on the capacitance of the capacitor and the value of the resistor so I have it set to 8 volts right now there is 8 squares so we just hit the uh, top line right there and uh, so let's uh, we will discharge it again there you saw the line go down let us set it to uh, let's just do 4 volts like that and uh, come back over to here and so yeah right now we have it discharged and now we'll see it work its way up to 4 volts and you can see the curve a little better right there so it charges up to two thirds in about one second about two thirds of the way so each one of these squares from left to right is one second so we got uh, this right here we go over there and that's about two-thirds of our total uh, charge right there approximately right there and that's because we have a one microfarad so one one thousandth of a farad and this is actually a 1000 ohm resistor I forgot to mention that earlier so you take their two values and you multiply them uh, together so this is one one thousandth this is 1000 so you multiply those together you get one so that's one second and that is the RC time constant which means it is about a fifth of the time to get fully charged what you consider fully charged and over that period of time you'll get a about two-third voltage change and so we can see that with the first second it's about two-thirds of the way approximately over the next second you take where you are at at that point and it's about two-thirds of the uh, way again from your finish point and so on it keeps getting smaller so it's harder to see the first one is the most dramatic but that's because there's the most uh, voltage difference but uh, you keep getting two-thirds and then two-thirds of that, two-thirds of that, two-thirds of that, until you consider it fully charged, which is like 99.8% or something, after about uh, five time constants. So now, I just grabbed a uh, 3 kilo ohm, 3,000 ohm resistor, and so we'll pull out the 1,000 ohm resistor and uh, swap them right now, and I will unpause my uh, oscilloscope right there. So. It is charged right now, charged to uh, 4 volts, because that's what I have the power supply set to at the moment. And the light is not uh, very nice on that power supply, but uh, oh well. So, there we go, we will discharge the uh, capacitor, as you can see there. So it discharges instantly because we have a short circuit. So, you don't have to worry about charge and discharge times when you short circuit it. You do have to worry about high current though, especially with these larger values. Super capacitors, you don't want to short circuit uh, at all, unless they internally reduce current, which I have some that do. So in any case, now we're going to yank this. You see the curve is a whole lot less dramatic. So let's get it until it's all the way, let's try to pause it at one square away from there and so now ultimately we are charging it as I said before to 4 volts and you can see that uh, looks like we did hit that one two three four there's probably a little bit more going in there but in any case 
we have three times the resistance with the same capacitor. With uh, one kilo ohm resistor, it took about one second to get about uh, two thirds of the total charge. Here you can see we got one, two, three seconds because it's a three kilo ohm resistor. Right there, that is about the exact same point that uh, we had at one second with a one kilo ohm. But with the three kilo ohm, it's taken three times longer. So you can adjust the value of the uh, capacitor or the resistors. You multiply the farads by the ohms, and that's your time constant, where you get to about two thirds of the, in this case, charge time, or charge uh, voltage, and about a fifth of the charge time. So now, we have the opposite set up right now. Right now the resistor is discharging the capacitor. And we'll zoom back, we'll see we are down at the zero volt line. By the way, this uh, oscilloscope that I have, it's, it's pretty affordable, I think it was about $40, including the uh, power supply and uh, the probe there. But uh, in any case, we have here, it comes to these two alligator clips which I just clip to these alligator clips that I crimped to jumper wires so I can just plug it right into wherever I want in the board so in any case we have them in uh, parallel right now so the uh, capacitor if it was charged discharged through the resistor this we're back to the one kilo ohm resistor by the way and so what we're gonna do is make our uh, makeshift switch here and so we are gonna go to the positive rail and then when I connect to where the uh, resistor and the capacitor are in parallel you can see that the capacitor instantly charged so whatever current that goes through the resistor there's a ton more current that can come through this uh, jumper there from the positive rail to charge the capacitor so the capacitor is going to stay charged the main thing is we yank there and the uh, jumper as if letting go of a switch and there you can see we have that curve and again since we're using a 1000 microfarad so one one thousandth of a farad and a 1000 ohm resistor it's going to take about a second to change about two-thirds of the power supply voltage and then the next two-thirds next two-thirds and so on and again if we use the three kilo ohm resistor with the same capacitor it would take three times as long so that's how RC time constant works. It has this basic curve here. It, voltage drops really fast at first and then slows down over time. Finally it levels off and just keeps going. And uh, there you can see it's holding zero volts for uh, forever. As long as we keep that jumper removed, we're not pressing a switch or whatnot. And uh, it just stops growing because I paused it. But in case we can briefly show that again. So, the capacitor should have, oh, I need to go there. So, now the capacitor will charge instantly, and uh, there we go, and now discharging over time. So now, this video is going to start getting too long, so we're really going to wrap up, but, uh, I'm going to show uh, this first. So, when you use the 555 timer, it uses a capacitor that's charging and discharging. And, in a sense, it uses its RC time constant. First, the capacitor uh, charges. It has a couple pins that watches the uh, voltage of the capacitor, kind of like our oscilloscope. And so, when the capacitor, in this case, is going to charge through a resistor and a diode to bypass that uh, resistor it charges to about two-thirds power supply voltage when you're talking about the 555 timer then the 555 timer basically closes a switch to which the capacitor starts discharging like this and again the amount of time is basically the uh, resistance times the capacitance RC right there and so it looks at two-thirds and one-third voltage charges up to two-thirds and then discharges to uh, one-third as it uh, discharges it closes a switch basically and then once it gets to one-third the switch opens so that it can start charging now also while it is discharging you may think current can still go there keep 
uh, trying to charge it but actually it just goes right to the negative rail right there you have a direct connection from that side of the resistor over there so it doesn't influence the discharge time at all and uh, so if you use equal value resistors you're going to get pretty close to half of the time it's charging and then half the time it is discharging when you're using a 555 timer so I thought that would be a good circuit to throw onto there because it's kind of confusing when you get to the 555 timer so I think it's better to introduce this part of the circuit right after you learned about RC time constant so in any case thanks for watching I will see you in the next video